Michelle Backus with Rutgers Cooperative Extension of Middlesex County, and today we'll be talking about how to maintain a lake shoreline restoration project. Lake shoreline restoration projects are low maintenance, but that does not mean they can be ignored. There are a few critical tasks, especially in the first few years, that will make the project a success. A written maintenance plan specific to your project should be provided that covers preventative and corrective maintenance items. This video is meant to cover general maintenance issues for all shoreline restoration projects. The project must be treated like a natural area. Just like a forest or meadow, the area is not fertilized and the leaves are not to be raked or removed. All dead vegetation is kept in place in the winter. The dead vegetation provides seed for next year's growth, as well as habitat and food for wildlife. Watering in the first year is critical for the survival of new plantings. In general, the plants will need about an inch of water per week, ideally in the morning. Pay attention to rain events and periods of drought and modify watering schedules accordingly. After the first season, root systems will develop further so that watering may not be necessary unless there is an extended drought. Weeding out invasive plants will be important in the first three years. The goal should be to keep out unwanted, known invasive plants, such as common reed or mugwort. Remove invasive weeds before they go to seed. During the first three years, weeding should be planned for the spring and midsummer months. It is essential to keep a copy on file of the original project design and plant list. This list should have pictures showing what the leaves and flowers look like. After about three years, the native plants will fill in so that weeding will rarely be necessary. Dense growth of native plants should be encouraged to help reduce overland runoff and control soil erosion. The dominant plants may change over time and some species may do better than others. This is part of the natural evolution of a shoreline buffer. Mowing is only necessary if the shoreline does not include trees and shrubs, but is more like a meadow comprised of wildflowers and grasses. In this case, mowing can be done in the early spring, before plants start to grow and before birds make their nests. If trees and shrubs are part of the restoration plan, then no mowing should be done. Instead, spot trimming with a weed whacker may be done sparingly, being careful not to trim native plants. Again, the goal is to encourage the native, desirable plants and discourage the invasive plants. Replanting or reseeding areas where plants have not survived is a normal part of every restoration project. Replanting should take place in the second year after determining why the plants did not survive and addressing the issue. It is important to make sure no part of the shoreline is left bare, which may cause erosion problems. Vegetation cover should be kept at 85%. Monthly monitoring should be done once the project is installed. It's helpful to walk the site with an expert who knows what problems to look out for. It is helpful to have an inspection checklist to ensure none of these issues are overlooked. These problems may include aggressive plants outcompeting the native species, developing gullies or erosion, dead plants and identifying areas to replant or reseed, fence repairs around the project, goose fencing repairs used to deter waterfowl from eating vegetation, and erosion control material repairs. Ensure that the institutional memory of the project is documented. Often, positions change, and new staff must be made aware of the project. Take pictures of the project. There is no better way to demonstrate your project's success than by showing before and after pictures, as well as seasonal images documenting changes over time. Take pictures of the same spot before construction and then every year during the same season for better comparison. Maintenance of a shoreline restoration project should be discussed during the planning phase so that staff understands that the project does not end when the construction ends. Although maintenance is minimal, it is still critically important for success and cannot be ignored. A lake shoreline restoration project that is well maintained will improve water quality, provide habitat for wildlife, and add to the beauty of a lake environment.